ओके सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग केस नंबर थ्री एंड केस नंबर फोर ऑफ अवर आई केस सीरीज एंड दो आर न्यू वी डोंट डिस्कस दीज केसेज इन डिटेल बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द कंटेंट यू नो हाउ द पेशेंट गेट्स एडमिटेड हाउ वॉट टेक कोर्स इट टेक्स इन द आई सी हाउ इट गेट डिस्चार्ज बट वील टच दो क्रूशल पॉइंट्स इन दैट कोर्स विच अल्टर्स द मैनेजमेंट एंड विच शुड बी पिक अप बाई एवरी वन हु इज वर्किंग इन द आई सी आर सो लेट स्टार्ट एंड लेट सी द फर्स्ट केस सो द फर्स्ट केस इज सेंड टू अस बाय डॉक्टर विनय कुमार राठौर हु इज डूइंग ए सेकेंड ईयर डी एन बी क्रिटिकल केयर रेसिडेंट फ्रॉम बॉम्बे हॉस्पिटल मुंबई महाराष्ट्र थैंक्स डॉक्टर विनय फॉर सेंडिंग अस ही एज सेंड एन एक्सरे एंड आस्ट द पोजिशन ऑफ दिस लेफ्ट इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन वेयर इट इज गोइंग यू कैन अप्रिशिएट दिस इज अ सेंट्रल लाइन लेफ्ट कैन रिलेटेड टू लेफ्ट इंटरनल जुगुलर एंड इट्स गोइंग नॉट गोइंग टूवर्ड्स द राइट एट्रीएम बट इट इज गोइंग समवेयर इन द लेफ्ट for those for to make it more clear let's see how the normal left internal jugular goes i have taken this from the net this is the course of left internal jugular vein uh, I mean central uh, line in left internal jugular vein it go, it takes a bend and it goes somewhere into the right atrium and uh, right uh, ventricle here in superior vena cava i think this is a deep, little bit too deep it should have been pulled slightly in this x ray but i want to show you this bend if it is goes in the uh, aorta if it gets a carotid uh, cannulation then this com- this goes like this it is like uh, this and it doesn't takes uh, this uh, bend it goes and somewhere straight away comes here somewhere here like this we don't want anyone to get can can cannulate the carotid artery but you need to appreciate it comes like this and by the flow but on x ray it this normal internal jugular vein looks like this in dr vinay's x ray you see this left internal jugular vein is neither going in towards the uh, superior vena cava on the right right atrium neither it is going into the aorta but it's somewhere going on the left now we have one more x ray from our collection you see again the left internal jugular vein cannulation and this central line is coming straight towards the left so where it is going we had a doubt uh, when we connected the central line to our monitor and we may try to measure the cp so it was a little bit more higher it was somewhere around 30 25 30 like that pressures we were going and it was a little pulsatile so we had a doubt whether we have cannulated the artery but it was not on the artery because in, if had it been in the artery the pressure would have been 120s 130s systolic blood pressure but they were pulsatile sort of trace and it was somewhere around 25 to 30 so but in doubt we remove this uh, line but what is which is the position where it is going so you need to appreciate this in some patients you have left superior vena cava also patent so your left um, uh, internal jugular uh, uh, cannulation goes from left internal jugular crossing left subclavian and it goes into the left svc so it is technically in the vein so it's not harming the patient but uh, what happens this left superior vena cava drains into the coronary sinus and coronary sinus uh, is a is 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 not of that uh, capacity which a right atrium has so if you give fluids or something push through this it will be very painful it will very ultimately is draining is draining into the uh, here only but um uh, it is very painful so you should remove it but this is an anomaly which everybody should know that it can happen the left internal jugular uh, vein cannulation go into the left superior vena cava now the question which dr vinay asked why it can't be an azygous vein so so this is the image which i have taken from the net you see azygous vein um, drains into the superior vena cava like this i read the literature lot of literature and could find only one or two reports in which the azygous vein was on the left side so azygous vein is usually 98 to 99% on the right side and on the left side it is an hemi azygous vein which also drains into the azygous vein and in, in at the above there is a accessory hemi hemi azygous vein which also drains here so the azygous veins possibility of getting on the left side in a patient and that to it's not a very big vein it's a small vein as compared to left vena ke, uh, cava 
so the central line through left internal jugular vein getting into the azygous vein on the left side in the small vein is very less you can confirm only in the cath lab that's the only place where you can uh, find out where it is but having said that into uh, cannulation into the left superior vena cava is a little bit more common and you should uh, uh, know this entity and at times there is no other uh, anomaly in the patient other than this left svc but you should understand the that this this is one thing which is present in many of the patient so i hope dr vinay's doubt is clear if you have any doubt you can ask and also those who want to send me x rays or any images or any questions uh, for this uh, case series you can send me on dr ankur at esbicm.org now let's jump to our second case now this is a young male somewhere around 25 26 no previous comorbidities and he suddenly presented with all four limb weakness so we t- we get a call from a outside hospital that we are referring a patient of uh, gbs so we arranged the bed and what we found that on the blood gas we found that out of all this the potassium was very low so many of have you had already picked up that this is not gbs this is hypokalemic periodic paralysis so those who don't know whenever a young patient this was male but usually there are females also females usually present more than this whenever they present with sudden onset all four limb weakness gbs usually starts with uh, ascending or descending time there is a classical uh, weakness in the lower limb progression over um, uh, to upper limbs like that but usually hypokalemic periodic paralysis presents suddenly and the weakness is almost equal in all four limbs and the moment you supplement potassium it it gets corrected so always when a patient comes with all four weakness do check your potassium levels now this after correction of the potassium this power improved it was 4 by 5 uh, on admission it was 1 by 5 now if you see this if you calculate the anion gap 143 minus 115 plus 18.4 so it somewhere comes around 10 so it is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so those who want to solve the abg you can listen to the lecture which i uh, posted how to solve abgs so it is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and the cause seems in this patient is renal one there was no gi history whether, whether the potassium is going lost through the gi tract so it is a uh, renal loss through potassium so you have only two differentials either it is renal tubular acidosis type 1 or type 2 because type 4 has hyperkalemia so we need to work up uh, for renal tubular acidosis type 1 and type 2 cause and that we will find out what is the cause because after correction if we discharge the patient he may again present with this condition also in such patients don't forget to send calcium magnesium phosphorus specifically magnesium until unless you don't correct the magnesium uh, the potassium will not get corrected this is very very important so these were the two cases uh, both very interesting do read about these entities left left superior uh, vena cava and hypokalemic periodic paralysis again i am repeating if you all want to send your cases which you need uh, to get uh, shown in the case series you can send me on drankur@esbicm.org thank you take care keep learning